dear President Vaccari, dear friends, I am pleased uh, to participate in this online event organized by Rondine Cittadella della Pace and to greet all of you while offering a few thoughts on the theme of diffusing new tensions the post-pandemic world will need leaders of peace. We are all aware that of the fact that the COVID-19 virus has revealed vulnerabilities in various sectors of our societies and in many instances aggravated numerous social ills that sadly continue to, to challenge our communities. It has also placed a great strain on and even division of human relationship, whether between states, among communities, or within families. While this situation has produced new tensions, they should not be considered insurmountable. Rather, they are an occasion for us to become makers of peace, to revitalize our communities and families by seeking the common good and placing the good of others before our own personal desires. This applies especially to leaders who have the responsibility of promoting peace among their peoples. A leader of peace must be first a person of peace with God, with others and in oneself, appreciating that the other is one like myself with uh, inviolable inherent dignity. As Pope Francis stresses, if we accept the great principle that uh, there are rights born of our inalienable human dignity, we can rise to the challenge of envisaging a new humanity. This is the true path of peace, not the senseless and myo myopic strategy of sowing fear and mistrust in the face of outside threats. For a real and lasting peace will only be possible on the basis of a global ethic of solid solidarity and cooperation in the service of a future shaped by interdependence and shared responsibility in the whole human family. Building peace requires that each of us do our part to practice and to promote it through solidarity with others, especially those marginalized among us, and through fostering mutual understanding and social friendships with others. This is strongly encouraged by the Holy Father. The processes of change that lead to lasting peace are crafted above all by peoples. Each individual can act as an, an effective living by the way he or she lives each day. This means that everyone has a fundamental role to play in a single great uh, creative project to write a new page of history, a page full of hope, peace, and reconciliation. There is an architecture of peace to which different institutions of society contribute, each according to its own area of expertise. But there is also an art of peace that involves us all. In these times when many aspects of life seem fragmented and incoherent, it is all the more necessary for us to live out our call to solidarity, born of the consciousness that we are responsible for the fragility to, of others as we strive to build a common future. All over the world, in our communities and in our families, there is a great need for reconciliation, charity, and peace. There is also a need for peacemakers, men and women prepared to walk boldly and creatively to initiate processes of healing and renewed encounter. It is my hope that this event may add to the promotion of peace a goal to which all of us are 
fully committed to achieve, recognizing that such an initiative requires much sacrifice on the part of each of us. Leaders of peace should be the first to make the sacrifices that foster encounter and to seek a convergence on at least some issues. They should be ready to listen to other points of view and to make room for everyone. Through sacrifice and patience, they can help to create a beautiful polyhedral reality in which everyone has a place. I wish that this significant meeting promoted by the students and former students of Rondine may accomplish the proposed objectives along the path of communicating peace and dialogue as a response to the most urgent problems of our time and to the new conflicts presently emerging. Thank you for your attention.